In this class, 18 freshmen have gavels, or subcommittee chairs. 10 of them are women. We have seven women chairs of full committees, 39 women chairs, 39 women with gavels of chairs and subcommittees, and maybe even more. And so it is pretty exciting. So this, this caucus, which is a 60% or more women, people of color, LGBTQ, comes together, as I say to them, our diversity is our strength, our unity is our power. The most diverse freshman class of the House of Representatives has been busy on its first 100 days in the majority. The group of more than 60 new Democratic members have captured national attention and tested the Trump administration's leadership. Joining me now, three freshman Democratic members of the House of Representatives. Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger of Virginia's 7th District. She is a former CIA officer and sits on the House Foreign Affairs and Agriculture Committees. Congresswoman Abby Finkenauer of Iowa's 1st District. She is a member of the House Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. And Congressman Harley Ruda of the California's 48th District. He is as a member of the House Oversight Committee, all three flipped their districts from red to blue. Welcome to all of you. Congratulations on your first 100 days. Representative Spanberger, let me start with you. You have deep expertise okay. in this country's intelligence. Uh, uh, you have walked into a government that has probably been disrespecting our intelligence community more than uh, than in recent history and you have to go there and share with your colleagues what you and your colleagues in the cia and elsewhere in the intelligence community actually do how so many of you work without recognition how many of your colleagues have died without recognition how has that been for you well What's been really tremendous is having the experience of talking with my colleagues, uh, particularly the freshmen, and, and being a resource for them, talking about the experiences of what it is to be an intelligence officer, how it is that the intelligence community uh, works to ensure that we're providing good or um, and well-sourced information to leadership in Washington so that they can make good and informed decisions. Um, it's, it's been a real challenge watching the way the administration has disrespected or um, not acknowledged the value of intelligence and the intelligence community because truly at its core the the goal of of any intelligence officer is to collect really good information to help inform the decisions that policymakers are making that the administration is making and um, I hope we move towards a place where we see leadership valuing all of the information uh, that they possibly can obtain so that we can make good decisions for we this know, country and for the American people we know that when there are scientists in Congress there's better science policy. We know when there are doctors in Congress, there's better medical policy. Uh, will we understand intelligence better because of people like you? Well, I think it's understanding the work of the intelligence community, understanding intelligence, but also understanding the risks that we're facing as a country when we look at, uh, you know, threats against our infrastructure, threats against our elections, um, and, and just some of the concerns that people have uh, with cyber attacks and, you know, what third, uh, you know, what, what state and non-state actors might try and uh, how they might try and aggress against our country. It's incredibly important that we have people who really understand the types of threats that exist who have worked to thwart them, work to understand them. Um, and, and I think that that skill set and that knowledge base is, is very beneficial to, to the new Congress and, and to the country. Representative Finkenauer, you are from Iowa. Uh, you are the second youngest member of uh, Congress, second youngest woman in Congress. Uh, you, obviously, being from Iowa, you have great interest in some of the things that are going on today as it relates to agriculture, as it relates to trade, as it relates to small business, because uh, some of the farmers in, in your state are small business people, and matters as they relate to climate. And it all comes together for you. Uh, what have you, what's your experience been like on those matters that are so important to your constituents? Well, I'm lucky now to be able to chair uh, the subcommittee of rural development, agriculture, trade, and entrepreneurship. And so what I've really tried to focus on these first 100 days is actually bring Iowans to Washington so that they're actually heard through all of the chaos that is often going on when it comes to trade. Uh, so that has been uh, just uh, truly a huge honor, um, but also heartbreaking at the same time. You know, oftentimes you hear a lot of stats about 
about um, the money being lost, all of that, but you're not hearing it from folks who are actually living it day to day. I mean, we had a woman come and testify who told me that she's telling her three sons not to go into farming hmm. because she's worried hmm. about that future. That's terrifying when you're talking about my state. Um, and on top of it, you had um, another farmer as well who, you know, he's a pork producer and worried about uh, all of the retaliatory tariffs really coming down on them hard. Um, I had somebody telling me that he's dipping into his 401k, a 16-year-old telling me that he's worried about uh, even being able to have his friends want to stay in the area. He's not thinking of going into farming either now. I mean, we're talking about the future of my state on the line here. So every yep. day that I'm in Congress right now, it's about uh, stepping up for the folks that I hear from every day and making sure folks in Washington are finally hearing them as well. Representative Ruta, you and I spoke uh, when it wasn't clear. Uh, you, it seemed like you had won the election, but it, it, it took a little longer than it did uh, for some other folks. You are a man who has come out of uh, a family business. You have a lot of regard for family businesses, but one of the things you are passionate about, as are your colleagues here, is health care. Uh, in fact, you don't all share a view on how to solve this. You have got, you've got different views uh, between the three of you, uh, which is fine, but you all share a view that we need better, more accessible, more affordable health care with a better outcome for all Americans. Absolutely, and uh, thanks for having me on the show. And hi, Abigail, hi, Abby. Uh, we're usually together hi. in D.C., but it's nice to be together with you on hi, TV Arlie. here. Uh, healthcare is obviously a key issue, not just for the constituents in Orange County that I represent, but across America. We have almost 30 million Americans who do not have insurance, and we have a very convoluted insurance system. We spend 18.5% of our GDP on healthcare. That's about twice as much as the other industrialized developed countries in the world. Yet we have some of the worst metrics when you look at uh, our, our health care vis-a-vis those same countries. So we know we've got a broken system. We know we have to have a better system. And I'm prepared to work with not just uh, my fellow members in the Democratic caucus, but reaching across the aisle and working with Republicans as well. Because ultimately, we're all paying for this dysfunctional health care system one way or another. We need to make it better. Uh all of you hold on right there. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with our freshman Democrats right after this. All right, we're back with our three freshman members of the House of Representatives, Abigail Spanberger, Abby uh, Finkenauer and Harley Ruda. Thanks to you for spending the Friday evening with me. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Representative Spanberger. There are so many, there are a few self-inflicted things going on in Washington, uh, the trade war and the, the border wall, but there are big issues. And, and whether it's yes. whether the big issues for you are uh, national security or climate or health care or immigration or income inequality, um, and when I say immigration, I mean the real immigration issues we've got in this country, what do you feel you can achieve? What do you, what do you, what are you putting your heart behind? What do you want to, what do you want to uh, look at in terms of a measurement of success come the next election. So I'm focused on the things that are important to the people of Central Virginia, the people who sent me to Washington, and that is addressing the rising cost of prescription drugs. That is ensuring that our broadband internet infrastructure allows our rural communities to connect the same way our suburban communities can. And that means bringing, uh, restoring faith in our political system overall. And I'm really proud that this freshman class has been focused on the issues that are important to their home districts. On the prescription drug front, you know, I have led on a bill that would uh, provide greater transparency to pharmacy benefit managers and the pricing of prescription drugs. I've co-sponsored the Medicare Price Negotiation Act uh, that would uh, require Me Medicare Part D to negotiate its prescription drugs. On the broadband internet side of things, I've partnered with my Republican colleagues and many of my Democratic colleagues to ensure that uh, when we're moving towards appropriation season, we are fully funding the broadband and internet focused programs that were in the 2018 Farm Bill uh, and also existing programs that have been vital to so many of our communities across the country. And of course, there was our campaign finance and good governance bill that so many of us joined together on because across our campaigns, we heard that people just don't necessarily have a strong mm -hmm. faith 
faith in those who represent them. And, and for me, back in Central Virginia, it's also about being accountable. So we've done uh, three town halls so far. I've got two on this uh, district break uh, upcoming this next week and the week after. And I want to continue being engaged directly with the people who sent me to Washington so that I make sure I'm addressing the issues that are important to them. Representative Finknauer, I know you are obviously you're, you're interested in the issues that you, you are on the subcommittee for, that you're chairing the subcommittee for on agriculture and entrepreneurship. Um, when you go back, when you are uh, in, in your constituency, uh, how do people, how are they responding to this new Congress? Because so many people in this country are frustrated with politics in general. Are they excited by the idea that something different might be happening? They are. You know, uh, a lot of people talk, you know, about what did 2018 mean? And uh, a lot of folks think it was a referendum on the president. And I think very specifically in my district, it was a referendum on the chaos and dysfunction of Washington, D.C. So uh, when folks are coming to talk to me, when we're doing conversations with your congresswoman, where we're literally having kitchen table-like conversations, where uh, we're going back and forth, sharing ideas, just like I did as a little girl, where I'd sit there with my grandpa, who was a Democrat, and an uncle, who was a Republican, and we'd have these ideas, and uh, we could you know, disagree, but still respect each other at the end of the day. And I think that's what they're starting to see, especially from this new freshman class and a lot of uh, the members that help flip these seats. Uh, we listen to what folks wanted in our district and what they want is us to go get something done. And so uh, we're talking about investing in transportation and infrastructure, which is desperately needed. Uh, you know, when you're talking about Iowa in particular, we've got the most structurally deficient bridges in the entire country. That's not a Republican or Democratic issue. That's just a good government issue. We're talking about broadband and making sure that we have that in every corner of our state, uh, you know, for our farmers with the precision, precision ag that's, uh, that's new and um, obviously a big part of the future of agriculture in our state and in the country, but also for entrepreneurs so that they can come home and live in small towns and uh, be able to start a business. I mean, these are things that we can actually get done and we need to again, find that common ground to do it. I'm excited every day because of the uh, subcommittee that I chair. I actually really enjoy working with uh, my ranking member, Dr. Joyce. Uh, we're able to find that common ground and we're able to move things forward. And uh, that's what I think we need to continue to do for the next year and a half and hopefully years to come as well, because that's what folks deserve. Congressman Ruta, you are in Southern California. To the south of you is a border that is the focus of, uh, it seems, all discussions and all discussions having to do with the Department of Homeland S uh, Security, which was uh, formed to keep uh, America safe from serious external threats. Uh, it wasn't formed as an immigration agency. To the north of you, in Northern California, you have um, uh, Silicon Valley, which is desperate for more talent and, and, and puzzled by the fact that people who, they think the break in immigration is something entirely different than Donald Trump does. How do you go uh, and deal with the issues of immigration in your constituency? Yeah, the big challenge is the political rhetoric that has entered the discussion, driven mostly by the president. There really is an opportunity for bipartisan support in addressing our immigration issues. Uh, everybody wants secure borders. Everybody wants secure ports. Everybody wants to stop uh, the interdiction of drugs coming into our country. Uh, but we also want to have a fair process, and we also want to make sure that we are having uh, individuals come who can help create businesses and fill needed jobs here in the U.S. But when the rhetoric becomes so politicized, as uh, President Trump does by uh, build the wall and make Mexico pay for it, it's difficult for us on either side of the aisle to get together and sit down and look for those proactive solutions. And that's why I've been committed all along in my uh, uh, time there, is we need to find common ground. We need to find uh, decency in how we talk to each other and discuss these issues. And we need to reach across the aisle and find bipartisan support for these issues. And if we do that, we really can address these big issues facing our country. But we can't do it as long as our leaders are pitting Americans against Americans. Let me ask you quickly, uh, Representative Spanberger, about um, our foreign policy. Uh, it, it, you deal with national security. You, as as an as part of what you did in your life, you your career, you dealt with national security. Are you concerned about our foreign policy direction right now? 
Deeply. I'm deeply concerned about where we're headed from a foreign policy perspective. We, uh, from the fact that we have pulled out of agreements with other countries, with partner nations, from the Paris Accord to the Iranian nuclear deal, we have demonstrated that we will go back on our commitments. Uh, we have a president who routinely undermines and talks negatively about the value of NATO. We just had the 70th anniversary of NATO, and this is deeply disturbing because the the, the peace uh, throughout Europe and the stabilization, the growth that we've seen in the United States um, is built on this notion of our cooperation with our NATO allies. We have created antagonistic relationships with our trading partners and our friends um, internationally through the trade war that we as a nation have begun. And I think it's incredibly troubling the path that we are on. But I will say that I am also heartened because we have many members of Congress who are taking an active role in demonstrating and, and showing in our work on the Foreign Affairs Committee, on the Armed Services Committee, that we recognize the value of the relationships that our country has forged with our allies and our partners over decades and decades. And we continue to affirm the value and the role that the United States should play in the world. Um, I am troubled by the budget that the administration put out. The budget proposal cuts um, a tremendous amount of money from our foreign aid and development budget, which is, uh, I think, very troubling, particularly from a counterterrorism mm -hmm. and a kind of stabilization uh, point of view. But I, I, I don't think that we have reached a point where we can't come back from the problems that right. we've created. But I do think that we need to make sure that we are firmly grounded and rooted and pursuing informed policy uh, rooted in our values and that we are keeping our promises and moving forward with our, our partner nations. Well, I am optimistic and heartened for the conversation with the three of you. Thank you for spending your Friday evening with me, Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger, Congresswoman Abby Finkenauer, and Congressman Harley Ruda. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.